right now, we are talking about the interview I've been telling you about all morning. We have got Detective Patrick Kennedy to talk about the Jeffrey Dahmer film that looks amazing. Detective Kennedy, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Big J. I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I am doing excellent this morning here. I'd like to commend you. I was watching the trailer for the uh, film. I love your mustache. <laughs> okay. It was a little dis- disconcerting to see it on the big screen. It looked big enough to, for some birds to come and build a nest in. I kind of made me want to trim it, but uh, I, I I've, like it. I've still kept it. It makes you look like a legitimate detective. Well, here's the question oh. here. For a lot of people here, uh, you know, this movie intrigues them. Everybody is, you know, really, really interested in seeing the film, I think, because people don't know you, your story with Jeffrey Dahmer. It's are, Did you befriend him? Let's skip to the end and start there. I mean... You interviewed him first. You took the statements from him. You discovered all this stuff. But then, did you become his friend at some point? Is that the truth, or are we? Am I misunderstanding? Well, that? I'd like to. I'd like to call it uh, say that we became intimate strangers. Um, as a homicide detective, you have to kind of befriend your suspect. You have to build a rapport. However, this was an unusual homicide case because usually. A homicide confession will last anywhere from three and a half to maybe five, six hours, and this one lasted six weeks. So over the course of six weeks, yes, uh, I did kind of form a bond with the guy, as weird as it seems. I know it makes me kind of almost feel weird about myself to say that I I kind of formed a bond with the kid, and I kind of liked him. I felt bad for him. I, I felt he was a pathetic creature, even though he committed all these horrendous atrocities. If you talk to him... You wouldn't uh, think, oh, I'm looking at some evil devil that committed these things. He was a very articulate, good-looking, plain-spoken young man who was the product of upper white middle class and a a good Lutheran upbringing. So he was a paradox in many ways. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I think is so interesting about the film and why people would want to definitely check it out because... It is so odd. I mean, he's so odd. I mean, you get to learn a little bit more about him and how he was seemingly so normal, but yet so opposite of normal. But also, the thing is, there were so many... I mean, the police work on this case gets criticized a lot as well. How are you involved... Were you involved in any of the bad police work that was a part of this, or were you only involved when you actually got into the good stuff and, like, the good work? I mean, because there were chances to catch him early on where the Milwaukee Police Department totally buttered it, didn't they? Well, you're right about that, but let's not forget that Jeffrey Dahmer was an adept at fooling authority figures. Not only did he fool his mother and his father, but he fooled... uh, a judge, a probation parole officer, psychiatrist and psychologist, his building superintendent, because of his articulation and his knowledge and the resources he was given as a young man, he had an incredible ability to talk to authority figures. Um, he knew how to fool them. I, I like to say he knew how to play the game. I see. Uh, so the thing about Jeffrey Dahmer was that even though he committed all these heinous acts, he could be very charming. He could be very tolerant. Let's not forget he was a very nice-looking young man. And when we talked to the people that were with Jeffrey Dahmer, and let's not forget, I've talked to a lot of people here that were actually sexually involved with Jeffrey Dahmer who he did not kill. So in the community, especially the gay community, he was known, but not known as an evil person, yeah. but as kind of a nice-looking person. And when you talk to him, he did have the ability to uh, to be charming almost, to be engaging. Yeah. So unless you saw the other side of him, the secret side that he had, that he kept very close to the vest, uh, you would never get the idea that he was a crazy guy. That's what I want to know about the, the, the secret side of him. How Explain a little bit. We don't have a ton of time here, but explain a little bit how you guys figured out there was something going on, and then tell us kind of about when you went to Dahmer's house and, and, and got him. And tell us about the whole, like, revelation of, holy crap, what did we get ourselves into here? Right. Well, um, I was a homicide uh, detective. I was working the third shift, and I just walked in for my midnight shift a couple minutes before 12 when the lieutenant told me that two police officers uh, called and said they found a head in the refrigerator. That's how I got called to the scene. Wow. Now, let's not forget that Jeffrey Dahmer's 18th victim would have been his 18th victim. Them, escaped from his apartment that night and ran down uh, after, 
As he got outside the apartment building, he ran down the street to a Milwaukee police squad where two police officers were engaged in an unrelated matter. And when he got there, he had a handcuff on him on one hand and was just wearing his underwear. So, of course, the cops wanted to know what the hell was going on. And since they couldn't use our Smith & Wesson key to get the handcuff off, this young man walked them back to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Now, let's not forget that both the young man and Jeffrey Dahmer were extremely intoxicated, and when they knocked on the door and Jeffrey Dahmer came to the door, he was kind of intoxicated and fumbling around, so, of course, the police officers just walked right in. Mm -hmm. And as they were looking for the key for the handcuffs, that's when they discovered photographs, Polaroid photographs that Jeffrey Dahmer had taken of several of his victims in... uh, positions of being cut up, cut open, and looked into. The one the one police officer, when he looked at the Polaroid, his first statement to me was, Pat, I thought he had some medical examiner autopsy photographs, but the more I looked at the photograph, the more I realized the body that was cut up in this photograph was in the room that I was standing in. And that's when they decided to try to arrest Jeffrey Dahmer. And it should be noted that He didn't just come willingly. He put up a hell of a fight. When I got there, these two large Milwaukee police officers looked like they had been in a hell of a fight. And Jeffrey Dahmer had taken quite a thumping and was handcuffed behind his back and on his legs at the time. So when I walked in there, I asked them, hey, what the hell is going on? And they just pointed to the refrigerator and said, take a look in that refrigerator. And So uh, So when I opened up the refrigerator and found an empty, clean refrigerator, except for a box of Arm & Hammer baking soda in the back and a box containing a freshly severed black male's head. There was no blood, and his eyes and his mouth were open as if he was going to speak to me. Wow. Now, what is, I mean, from that that's, point that's on, gotta... I was assigned to take Jeffrey Dahmer downtown and to, inter- and to interrogate him, and I spent the next six weeks interrogating him. But my partner, Mike Dubas, was left at the scene to find the seven or eight uh, human heads in the freezer, several skulls, several penises, and other body parts. He also found a 57-gallon hermetically sealed um, tank that had four bodies in it cut up and were covered with muriatic acid because Jeffrey Dahmer had found that it was easier to just melt them down in muriatic acid and then pour them as a sludge into the toilet and flush them away. It was much more efficient. Than cutting all, cutting the bodies all up and putting them in separate garbage bags. I mean, he was a smart guy, obviously. Here, did he explain to you why he? I, we know he wanted to turn him into like kind of gay zombies or something, you know, to put it to, to dumb it down. But what was with the eating of the people? What was his explanation for that? Why did he consume some of the bodies? Did he ever explain right. that? Uh, it, it was a while before we got to that, and only after the medical examiner said that the uh, fillets that we found in his freezer were bits of bicep, thigh, heart, and uh, liver that we asked him about that. He was kind of a pathetic guy. Uh, He couldn't really form a human relationship with somebody, and he was always complaining to me that none of his lovers wanted to ever stay with him. And and, because I asked him, I said, Jeff, why didn't you just get a regular boyfriend? Why did you have to keep killing people? And his answer to me was that because everybody always left him. No one wanted to have a deep and personal relationship with him. So at first he started drugging these people to keep him, to keep them with him so he could enjoy sex with them for about eight hours after they were drugged. But then one of them went to the police and complained, and he feel, felt that from now on, after he drugged people, he would have to kill them. So the ones that he did drug, he would strangle as they came out of the uh, drug-induced, and he would keep them around for a day or two and make love to them as they were dead. And it was only after they started to rot or decompose mm-hmm. that he started to, to cut them up and get rid of them. Wow, it's a and great... he told me that he thought that by keeping the body parts with him and by actually eating like their heart or their bicep, that that, that person never did, in fact, leave them, that they actually became part of him. Wow. Now, I know that sounds crazy as hell, yeah. but... That's his, in I mean, his mind, this made total sense. Exactly. I mean, obviously a very crazy guy. It's an interesting story. We are out of time, but the Jeffrey Dahmer Files, available all over the place. Comcast, Cox, Cablevision, Time Warner, uh, DirecTV, online on iTunes, Xbox, SundanceNow.com, YouTube, IFC. Check it out all over the place. Great movie, uh, great reviews. The Jeffrey Dahmer Files. If you're into this and you want to hear more, check it out. Detective Patrick Kennedy, thank you so much for taking the time for us this morning, man, and uh, congratulations on uh, cracking this big case back in the day, man. I appreciate it. 
Hey, thank you. It's my pleasure. Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10. On Billings number one hit music station. Hot 101.9.